Hi and welcome to RC Models and this is the sixth part on the CAT excavator from Bruder for conversion to radio control. In the series so far I've developed the linear actuators which I fitted to both the dipper and the bucket, powered the tracks and fitted a 360 degree turntable. In this maybe final part of the build video I managed to sort out the linear actuator for raising and lowering the boom. It has not been without its challenges and it's basically taken me all week to get the thing working to a level which I think is good enough to make a video about. So apologies to those who were expecting me to post a video a few days ago. I'm quite pleased with the manoeuvrability of the tracks being able to get on and off the low loader and apart from the fact that I'm not familiar with the controls it's actually much nicer to use than the original excavator which I converted which was the Hobby King one using Actualnix or Fugeli linear servos because those always return to centre. I know that Actualnix do do a linear actuator which doesn't do that and at some point I'm probably going to have to try one of those. I'll just pause a moment and let you see the thing working. Okay, I think that I ought to show you what I've been doing this week. So the actuator for the boom is exactly the same principle as I've used in the rest of the model. The main difficulty which I had was that I fitted two of these to a single speed controller and what I found was that at either end of the travel it would often bind causing the thing to stop. 
in the end I found that the only solution using a single speed controller was actually to have one working linear actuator and the other one a dummy. I have ordered some more of those little speed controllers so I'm going to experiment to see if I can get double the power without the binding using two speed controllers and two lead screws and if I do I'll make another video showing this. So as I said the main construction for these cylinders is exactly the same as for the other cylinders which I showed in the previous build videos and in some ways this one is easier. These are easy enough to get off you just push them backwards and they unclip and this part here actually comes off quite easily as well. I'll just do that for you. I get the right side. You just push in at the bottom and the two halves come apart. The first thing which I had to do was I had to remove the area in here and I'll just go over to a bit of video which I did showing you how I did that. This end piece here was turned down in exactly the same way as I did for the other ones and glued in. Being careful to make sure that I supported the screw so that it sat exactly level. And then the lead screw was made by first of all chopping it down with a hacksaw and then using the lathe to make a 3mm hole in the end there and then using the pillar drill to make a 2.5mm hole and then using a 3mm tap and a Tamiya type very short grub screw. The mounting arm again similar to what I did on the other cylinders however I did reinforce it with a piece of metal from the end of a six inch screw which I epoxied in place and in order to keep it in place first of all you can see how I've mounted the gearbox so that it's resting over this circular area and you have to get it the right way up otherwise the gears are going to foul with the plastic there and then what I did was I chopped down a piece of plastic which actually is an off cut from the weight that you put in roller blinds. Put that around the motor and then used two really thick cable ties and poured it down very tightly in place. The motor on this side is currently not connected up to the power source and I just put a piece of five or six millimeter aluminium on here to act as a force piston. I'll just quickly put this back. I haven't yet needed to put any travel limiters on because you tend to use this within its range and actually when it does reach the end it stops. If I do manage to power up the other actuator I probably will put the limits on because I think it's going to be much more powerful if I do that. Having said that I was actually quite happy with the way that it was digging. I am pleased with the amount of reach which I ended up with and I'll just show you what the travel limits are like. So as you can see we've got a pretty good range of movement and if you're wondering how I'm managing to operate both the tracks and the cab using the transmitter I'll just briefly explain. What I've done is I've put four mixes on which are operated by this button here and in the up position both this actuator and this one are operated by this stick. 
as you can see and when the button is pressed the mix instead uses the right stick to control the tracks so you have forwards and backwards and you have turn and everything else in between in case you're interested very briefly the mixes are as follows Mix 1 is elevator to elevator activated by switch E, minus 100%, minus 100%. This one turns off the elevators and similarly mix 2 does exactly the same for the aileron which turns off the other linear actuator. Mix 3 when activated uses the elevator to control the gear channel which is channel 5 and the mix there is 100% 100% so that's one of the track controllers and then mix 4 is aileron to auxiliary channel 1 which is used to control the other track input and it's kind of as simple as that I think that similar mixes would probably be available on a lot of other computer transmitters it's just very easy on this one because it's designed for this sort of thing I'm actually very pleased with this excavator conversion in fact so pleased that I'm probably going to start stealing parts from the Hobby King conversion which I did the next series which I think I'm probably going to have a go at is automating the low loader to go with the Mac hauler right I think that that's about it for this video I hope you've enjoyed the series and found it interesting and informative and maybe even had a go at doing one of these things yourself if you do please let me know and if you've got any questions I'm more than happy to answer them if I'm able to and if I can't I'm sure somebody else will be able to help if you're already subscribed thank you very much and if you're not maybe it's worth thinking about there are going to be plenty more brooder videos coming up i expect please keep those likes and those comments especially the comments coming it's actually quite nice to know that people are interested in what i'm doing and i'm always grateful for any suggestions i certainly don't know everything and until the next time thank you very much for watching